light our third candle as we hear John's words about John the Baptist. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. Let us pray, God of light. Help us to reflect your light in the world that is filled with darkness. May your light shine to dispel the darkness of night. Amen. Blessed be God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive to sin in spite of our best efforts. We have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven, and you are free. Free from all that holds you back, and free to live in a peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the words of your prophet, that anointed by your spirit we may testify to your light. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the people. All who, these, all who see them shall acknowledge that they are people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed, clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridge room, bridge room decks himself with, gar, with a garland. And as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its sh shoots. And as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up. So the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up all, up all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The second reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of the prophets, but test everything, hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who calls you, is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. I am sending my messenger before you. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter, beginning with the sixth verse. There is a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the, Malaysia, the Messiah. And he asked, they asked him, then what are you? Who are you? He said, I am not Elijah. Are you a prophet? He answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord. As the prophet Isaiah said, Now they have been seen from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor Elijah nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I'm not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing, the gospel of our Lord. Grace, peace, and mercy be to you from your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Were you ever afraid of the dark as a child? It's a pretty common fear to have, and I happen to have that, had that fear when I was a child. I hated it when it was pitch black in my bedroom, and I made my parents always have a nightlight in my room until I grew to a certain age and wasn't as afraid as I once was. As you probably remember, being afraid of the dark was an awful feeling. When you're in the dark, you have no idea what is out there. You feel lost, fearful to move, because you just might run into something unexpected. When you're in the dark, you can feel vulnerable, unsure of the world around you, you actually begin to crave the light. You desire to have the brightness of lights to guide you and show you the way. Light is something that we all need. If the world were all of a sudden to be plunged into total darkness, we would be a mess. With no sun to shine on, it, on us, the planet would become into a deep freeze, and my guess is that we would turn into popsicles. We need light to keep our world going, to make the seasons come and go and the days begin and end. God obviously knew this when he, on the first day of creation, he said, let there be light. It was the light that changed the dark formation, formless universe into a place where plants and animals and eventually humans could live. And from creation onwards, light has been important to our lives. Our bodies even change when we don't get enough light. When I lived in Portland, Oregon, during my internship, I felt light deprivation. 
Portland is a beautiful place to live when the sun shines, but unfortunately there are hundreds of days when the sun does not even peak over the clouds, these rainy overcast days of Portland. I absolutely remember hating those overcast rainy days. I found myself becoming tired when I shouldn't be, and even a little depressed. Eventually I found out that I was suffering from a very mild case of a disorder known as seasonal affective disorder, or SAD. People that truly suffer from this disorder need to have special light panels installed in their houses so that they can um, get out of those deep depressions by having the light um, give them the, the needed light that they're not getting from the outdoors. The truth is we need light. We can't survive without it. When you don't have enough light, your body feels the deprivation. And during this very wintry time of the year, the need for light is one I think everyone can relate to. When you turn on the clocks back an hour, you forfeit some of the light that your body gets used to in the summer months. There is less light to keep our spirits high and to show us the way. During this time of year, our bodies actually feel the loss of daylight, feel the days getting shorter and the nights getting longer. I tend to get the wintry blues, and my guess is many of you do too. These blues just mean that my body is craving the light. Well, in a way, craving the light is what Advent is all about. Advent is a time for us to remind ourselves that the light we crave doesn't come from the sky, or the S-U-N, sun, but from the S-O-N, or Jesus Christ. It's only through Christ that we can escape from the darkness. And that's why during Advent we spend time reminding ourselves of the light that only Christ can give us, a light that came into the world on Christmas Day. As people who know Christ's life in our lives, lives it's hard for us to think about what life would be with, like without Christ. I like to call the disease you suffer when you don't have Christ in your life <coughs> Ida Christ Affective Disorder. You are deprived of what only Christ can offer you. You're living without the life-giving light of Christ brought into your world. For those who live in the world without Christ's light, it's a very dark existence. When you don't have Christ's light in your life, you have an absence of hope. You have no one to truly rely on in times of sorrow and pain. You have no hope that you can overcome the obstacles that are going to happen in your life. Without Christ's light, you don't realize that whatever happens, the good and the bad, you are never alone in what you face. Having unchrist affective disorder is a lonely and sad existence. It's like living without light all the time because you're deprived of the life-giving light that Christ provides. You have no faith that tomorrow will be better. You have no hope that this life isn't the end, but that death is the beginning of eternal life. I have a friend who suffers with this problem. She doesn't know the light of Christ in her life. She didn't grow up in a home where going to church was important, and that meant that she really had no one in her life that brought her to Christ's light. She grew up with what I call that unchrist affective disorder. When I first met her in graduate school, I believe I was one of the first friends she had that was really dedicated to their faith in Christ. I remember even finally getting her to go to church with me one time and, and having her afterwards tell me it was a very confusing experience for her. Now this would be a wonderful story if I could tell her that I had converted her, but that really has not ever happened. Even though um, Amy will go to church with me when I need her to, um, when she's visiting, but she still hasn't fully found Christ's light in her life. As the years have gone by, though, our friendship has grown, and I continue to pray that Christ's presence will come. A few years ago, Amy suffered three devastating losses in her family <coughs> in the span of less than a year. She lost three close relatives. It would have been awful just to have had one of these things happen to her, but all three of them happened in a short period of time. And it was during this pain that I saw firsthand how not having Christ in her life affected her and these losses and how sad it was for her that she didn't have Christ there to help her during that time. And not that Christ wasn't there, but she just didn't know that Christ was there for her. 
Instead of being able to see the hope that in what would seem hopeless, she only felt empty and depressed. There was really nothing left for her after her loved ones died. Only questions about why. Why did it happen? My friend's hopelessness gave her no light to help her to see the way out. She didn't have Christ's light to guide her. And my prayer, of course, is that someday she will come to the realization that Christ has and always will be there for her. But until that day, we will continue to be close friends, and I'll continue to talk to her about Christ's life in, light in my life. So where does that put you right now? You're watching church this morning, and so that means something. What if is more than likely means is that Christ's light has affected you. You may be wondering then, how does unchrist affective disorder, what does it have to do with me if I already believe in Christ? Well, it affects you in how you help people find the cure for this disorder within them. It is your job as a child of God to make certain that those around you find Christ's love. After all, you know personally what it feels like to have Christ guide you and help you along the way. During the season of Advent, I want you to think about what having Christ's light in your life means to you. I want you to feel that warm light of Christ that and only that Christ can give you during this season of light deprivation, the season of, unex of expectation and waiting. Part of being committed to Christ means bringing Christ's light to those around you. Christ expects nothing less than you to make him a priority, not only for you, but for those you love. For those of you that are parents, that means that you have a commitment to make Christ a priority in the life of your child. Only you can show your child that Christ's light is important to you. For those of you that don't have children or that are empty nesters, that means that your relationship with God is there to show your family, friends, and neighbors who you are that you are a child of God, and that your life has been cha changed by God. And for all of us, it means that you share Christ's light with others. Let them know what it means to be a member of Zion, that there is a reason that you are here at this congregation, that Christ's light is alive here at Zion, and your witness to that light is what can bring others to Christ's light. You see, all of our souls depend on the light of Christ. We need Christ in order to survive the darkness of the world that, is, that we live in. We need Christ to help us through the many pains and sorrows that we face in our life. We need Christ to escape from the darkness of the world. It is so important that you don't lose sight of Christ's light in your life. Let Christ's light in. Let it shine brightly in your life and show you the way. And let Christ's life guide you to share that light with others. Because as it says in our gospel lesson for today, Jesus is our light. Amen.
Let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God of power and might, shine your radiance and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. God of preachers and messengers, you have entrusted your church with the work of proclaiming good news. Strengthen the witness of bishops, pastors, deacons, church musicians, lay leaders, and all people who contribute their prayer and talents to public worship. Embedded your word in their hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of every living creature, you announce the year of your favor for all of creation. Extend your kindness and relief to endangered animals and plants. Strengthen the human beings who rely on the rhythms of nature to make their living. Hear also God, your mercy is great. God of all people and nations, you plant us as your oaks of righteousness and ask us to care for one another. Be present with the leaders of every nation as they govern. Give them a spirit of righteousness so that your goodness and mercy is revealed through their actions. Here also God, your mercy is great. God of exiles and wanderers, you, you repair what is once destroyed. We pray for people who have been displaced from their homes by fire, flood, earthquake, or storm. Support the work of Lutheran work, World Rel Relief Lutheran Disaster Response, and all disaster relief organizations in their recovery efforts. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of power and helpless, you clothe us with strength when our spirits are weak and weary. Bestow your spirit upon this congregation and empower us to comfort the people who turn us in times of need. Make your church a place of refuge and healing. Today we pray for Judy and Karen. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of sinners and saints, you offer joy even in the midst of our grief. We are grateful for the beloved imperfect people whose lives testified to your radiant love. Anoint all who mourn with the oil of gladness. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless us that we offer, that through these gifts the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long-expected Savior fill you with love. The unexpected Spirit guide your journey, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.